So I'm sitting next to a statue of Kuan Yin, uh, the goddess of mercy and forgiveness. This is the form found in China. But the same idea of a forgiving deity is found in Christianity in, in the form of the Virgin Mother in Mexico, in the form of Guadalupe, in Egypt, in the form of Isis. The idea there is some universal deity showing mercy and offering forgiveness, no matter what foolishness the people on earth get up to. And so I was thinking we might be at one of those points where everybody needs a little bit of forgiveness. And I was thinking about how the deities or the, the divine figures represent those kind of truths beyond the common truths that people usually argue about. Um, in most human endeavors, telling the truth is not always what happens. And the exception is with poets. If the poets don't tell the truth, then they lose their connection to the muse, and then the world lives, loses poetry. And as a poet once said, truth and beauty are the same thing, and sometimes they're the only things that count. And so people looking for truth in a political process are often hunting in the wrong direction, and often you have to turn to the poets. So I want to turn to Langston Hughes and paraphrase a great poem of his. Let America be America again. Let it be the dream the dreamers dreamed. Let it be that great strong land of love where liberty is crowned with no false patriotic wreath, but opportunity is real for all and life is free and equality is in the air we breathe. Let America be America again, the land that has never been yet and yet must be the land where every individual person is free. So that's the truth of a dream. That's the truth of a land because of the difference between the country and a government. And when truth is going to be found, it's often found closer to the ground, closer to the land, closer to the deep heart of humanity that's always looking to be free. It's the job of the poets and the artists to address all the issues of the world. And currently it's hard to deny the kind of darkness that's in the world all the troubles and all the turmoils, all the terrors, and all the radical changes that are occurring. So you turn to the poets to get an idea of what's important in troubling times. This is the poet William Stafford. It's called The Ritual to Read to Each Other. If you don't know the kind of person I am, and I don't know the kind of person that you are, then a pattern that others have made will prevail in this world. And following the wrong God home, we may each miss our star. For there is many a small betrayal in the mind, a shrug that lets the fragile sequence break, sending with shouts the horrible errors of childhood, storming out to play through the broken dike. And just as elephants parade, each holding the other's tail, so that if one wanders, the whole circus won't find the park. I call it cruel, and maybe the root of all cruel, cruelty to know what occurs but not recognize the fact. And so I appeal to a voice, to something shadowy, a remote, important region in all who talk. Though we could fool each other, we should consider lest the parade of our mutual lives gets lost in the dark. For it is important that awake people remain awake or a breaking line may discourage us all back to sleep. The signals that we give, yes or no or maybe, should be clear, for the darkness around us is deep. So the poet's asking us at least to be clear we don't have to agree we just have to be clear, yes or no, or even maybe as an intermediary step when we're not sure. 
being clear in the midst of a dark time is one of the basic requirements and remembering that we're all trying to find the same park, the same place of community, the same place where the heart is open enough to welcome each other, even if you don't know the kind of person I am and I don't know the kind of person you are. We both know the depth of the human soul and the secret unity that holds us together whenever the times get dark. Mm -hmm.